In the first two videos on global strategy, we explored the motivations of why firms expand across geographic markets and then how they select countries in order to expand into. In this third video, we now will examine the different strategies firms use or can use to achieve this geographic expansion and then also the entry method firm use. The important thing to, to note at the start here is this geographic expansion strategy and the uh, and method of entry is a joint decision. It's not two separate decisions. And it should fit with their core competencies in their home market. In other words, firms should be moving abroad from a position of strength, not from a position of weaknesses. Similar to the notion of cost advantage versus differentiation advantage when we talked about competitive strategy, global strategy really involves looking at two basic dimensions. One is the question of local responsiveness. And this basically asks the question of does the firm need to tailor its product or service offerings to fit the local customer preferences that reflect the national and cu cultural differences that we discussed in the second video. The extent to which the firm must tailor its product and services involves greater levels of local responsiveness but such local responsiveness typically involves higher costs as the firm must incur greater costs to, to conduct this tailoring and to change their product and service. This may also involve impacts on their core competence because the firm is essentially changing what it does and changing the thing it's successful at. The second dimension is cost reduction. In other words, are multinational firms entering a global marketplace with the intention of reducing their operating cost? And this is similar to the cost leader idea where the firm is approaching and entering national markets by offering lower cost products or by obtaining resources and or value chain activities at a lower cost which will allow them to reduce lower prices. When we look at these two dimensions and plot them we now have four different general strategies that a firm may use to go abroad. And we'll start at the upper left. And the upper left is the global standardization strategy. And this strategy occurs when the firm must enter the market through a cost reduction approach because, for example, in emerging economies, the firm's products or services are too highly priced. Thus, it must reduce its costs in order to sell its goods or services. And there is low pressure for local responsiveness. What this basically says is the firm is offering a standardized product, a similar product across the various geographic markets it has entered without tailoring its product and through offering a lower cost product. That's the global standardization strategy. In the bottom left, you have what's referred to as the international strategy, where, again, the firm does not have to localize its product or service. Uh, for example, you can see Harley-Davidson, Starbucks, Rolex. These firms, they have a brand image in the worldwide or across the various national markets that brand is recognized. Thus, the firm does not have to change its product or service. And in these markets, there is room or capacity for a higher priced good or service. Thus, many luxury products or higher end products follow an international strategy because the consumers in those different markets are buying it for that brand. So the international strategy, again, is a similar product or service across various markets, but at a higher price point because there's little need for cost reduction. In the bottom right-hand side, we now have the localization strategy where, again, there's low pressure for cost reduction. So, again, the prices for these goods may be higher and the brands may be more recognized. However, there is high pressure for local responsiveness due to differences in national cultures or national preferences. Thus, the firm must adapt the product or services to fit local markets. For example, Nestle may have to adapt its, its candy to fit local tastes because certain certain preferences and cultural norms exist. Or, for example, McDonald's may have to, when it enters India, cannot offer beef hamburgers because of real religious uh, differences and thus must offer lamb burgers, which is their biggest selling product in India. The localization strategy involves relatively extensive changes to the product or service to fit the national market the firm is entering, and thus it's that's why it's referred to as localization. But the firm can offer it at a higher price point because there is low pressure for cost reduction. And then finally, in the upper right corner, you have sort of the, the almost the hybrid strategy of the transnational strategy where the firm 
has to be locally responsive, thus change its product or service, but must do so trying to minimize costs or reduce costs in order to offer product and services that fit the national market. And here what the firm tries to do is try to possibly keep the core of its product the same, but then localize various dimensions of it that are easier and or more cost effective to localize to fit the national market. So this transnational strategy really is a combination of the two. So when entering a foreign market, when the firm chooses the, the country it's entering, that country that it's entering, that that country choice is also impacted by the strategic decision. So it's not really a completely separate decision. It's looking at what opportunities exist within that country and then what type of strategy would the firm pursue that would allow it to be successful in that country. And again, ultimately, the firm is going to try and leverage its core companies. So for example, a firm that is a differentiator or a focus differentiator in its home market with a high cost structure, they're going to have trouble entering markets that require cost reduction. So it's unlikely that a differentiator in the home market will pursue a global standardization strategy or a transnational strategy in a foreign market because of the need for cost reductions. Thus, the firm, will, the multinational enterprise, will look for markets that are open to pursuing an international or localization strategy because it's a differentiator with a higher cost structure and probably a stronger brand. So again, the firm is trying to match its strengths, its strategy, and fit that with global markets and different countries where that strategy uh, can be leveraged towards a, extending its competitive advantage across geographic markets. The final issue here involves the method of expansion or how the firm executes its strategy. And as you can see along the, this graphic here, there are variations in terms of the level investment required and also the amount of control the firm has. Exporting offers the firm the lowest or cheapest way to expand geographically, but also the lowest level of control where the firm is simply selling its product or goods over in overseas markets through use of exporters and distributors, but the firm has a little control what happens once the firm, once the product leaves its, its uh, warehouses. As we move further to the right towards strategic alliances, we look at licensing and franchising and joint ventures, which are partnership agreements w with foreign entities. These offer the benefit of working with local, local organizations or local partners who know the market better. They require more investment than exporting, but they also provide the firm with greater control and risk sharing, and they allow the firm to learn about those markets and those national differences. And then finally, on the right-hand side are subsidiaries where the firm owns, and this is really the ownership test as far as the geographic expansion, where the firm owns 100% of the operation. And this involves obviously higher investment, but also greater control. But it may also potentially involve greater risk if the firm does not completely understand the market. So typically what firms do is they will initially start their geographic expansion through exporting. And then as they start to get a little bit better sense of the market, they will seek a partner through either uh, licensing, franchising, or joint venture to learn more about the market. And then as they learn more market learn more about the market and develop their own knowledge and expertise they will then fully enter the market through a subsidiary uh, through a subsidiary via acquisition or greenfield and thus own the operation but again it's a it's a development process and it's also important to note that this method of entry should fit what the firm is trying to do in terms of its strategy so for example if the firm needs to protect its intellectual property it may not use exporting or perhaps licensing and franchising, and it may focus more on joint ventures or subsidiaries to control its intellectual property. As a result, this internationalization or, or this decision to globally expand involves a simultaneous set of choices about where, what strategy, and what method of entry that all need to fit together to protect the firm's competitive advantage and allow the firm the ability to extend its competitive advantage in the markets it, it enters.